We've been somewhere. We've been somewhere. Welcome back to Buckle, Buckle up, up, baby. Episode 30. 30. We it's are we're both NFTs now. <laughs> we're both an NFT. 30. <laughs> 30. Michael. We've been somewhere. We've been somewhere. Oh boy. We're gonna do a full recap, wrap up. <laughs> what do you call it? Post game. Debrief. 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 We Tell haven't the, debriefed really. Not really. No. Where was Buckle Up, Michael? Tell the folks. Because otherwise I don't I don't want to blow smoke up my own ass, so I'm gonna have you do it. We was there, what'd you say? We in it? We out here. We out here. That's great phrase. We, we out here. Buckle up. We out we here. We out here. We were out there. We went to uh, the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, for the first inaugural inaugural VCon, a celebration of Gary Vaynerchuk, a celebration of new media. And what did your boy do at VCon? And why don't you tell the folks? <laughs> It's pretty wild. Yeah. It was a pretty wild weekend. Why don't you start? How do I do this properly? We were at we were at VCon. We'll get to it. But okay. we we've, we've been keeping this a secret for a couple of months, yes. right? Yes. yes. Why don't you start from there? Yeah, we've been alluding to it on the pod that big things were coming, but we couldn't talk about it. And basically, as a lot of people know, and you know, one of the people I've been doing impersonations of on my TikTok and Instagram and YouTube is Gary V. One of the more popular and re well received videos that I do are the Gary V videos. People like them. As the story goes, in 2019, I posted a video on TikTok. It was me in my car doing Gary V. I'm just so sick of fucking 20, 40 year olds complaining that they're not killing it, right? Like, if you want to win, fucking move to Louisiana and start a fucking peanut butter brand, right? Fucking peanut butter. That was it. Maybe the, it was maybe the second video I did. And you called me up. When a that few happened, hours later, and you're like, something's I, happening yeah. on TikTok. Yes, yes, yes. This whole story story will demonstrate the power of TikTok. I called you. I'm like, Michael, so you know I've been posting on TikTok a little bit, so something's happening with this one video. I keep refreshing. Hold, hold on. I'm, I'm going to back you up. Yeah. Because to properly get the context, this wasn't your first video on TikTok. No, no. You, I, how, how long have you been posting for? Probably every day, five days a week, five out of the seven days a week for a few months. Okay. So factor in, it's a lot of videos. Yeah. If you think about yeah. it, every week, you know, eight, like uh, two and a half months of, and, and actually before TikTok, I was on Instagram just making random like music content, some funny stuff here and there. But, that's right. But that started in like 2019, end yeah. of 2018, 2019, with just like a GoPro and some really crappy footage trying to just start this process. And it would, I was sweat. It would take me three hours to set up and be done. I'd be exhausted by the end. That was the beginnings of it. And then TikTok was kind of easier. You just throw up a thing. But I committed to myself to doing it every day, five days a week. Mm -hmm. Then landed on a Gary Vee video, Louisiana peanut butter, as the fans call it. Your first Gary Vee impression? Maybe second one. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was a fresher one. Yeah. I think I did one earlier. Toss it up. I, I was swallowing Crazy up. sound. <laughs> Like a Trump noise. <laughs> uh, I, I tossed the video up and I'm like, I think I did. I text you right then when it was happening. Michael, something's happening on TikTok. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are on TikTok for a long time had these moments. The video was going viral. Barstool picked it up. Barstool Sports picked up the video. I got a message on TikTok. Hey, are you the originator of this video? Can we get the original footage? And I said, sure, Dave. And he was like, yeah, sure. I'm going to make a sex tape out of it. No, it was just Barstool's like managing their account. Somebody, somebody reached out, an admin from Barstool. They then featured it on their Instagram channel, and that was to 7 million followers. After the video was already kind of surging organically on TikTok to like 150,000, 200,000 views, which was the most I'd ever gotten. And that was like, what is happening? So over the course of a Thursday when I posted the video to the Sunday, by Sunday, I'd say I had a little bit of an audience. Whereas before, I had a few hundred followers on Instagram and a few hundred on TikTok. Let's say it went to like 1,000 a, a, a or 2,000, something like that. Enough to be like, okay, there's like people here when I post. Mm -hmm. It felt like there was some kind of relationship that had formed. But again, I also want to stress, it didn't like blow me up mm -hmm. where I'm like, I have a million followers now. Like that kind of street cred people feel like those magic numbers. It just felt like there was something there. Right. And, and what, what, who reached out to you? In terms of what? In terms what did fuck Jerry say? 
Ah, oh, yes, yes. This is, oh, cool, this, this is okay. like a cool behind this the scenes. This is a cool TikTok behind the scenes thing. thing. So the video starts buzzing, and now I'm ready to hit the ground running. Okay, people are watching. I'm gonna do all these different impressions. Hold on. Hey. Oh, that's a weird moment on the pod, but there's something making a lot of noise. I think it's the vibration on the mandolin. Uh, it's bothering me because my ears are sensitive. Um, <laughs> Michael, on the other hand, is untrained. Uh, okay. Guy from Fuck Jerry reaches out. Yeah, wh- yeah. Fuck Jerry is one of these other like funny meme accounts. Or he used to work at Fuck Jerry. I'll, I'll remain nameless, but he reached out to me on Instagram because I was ready to hit the ground with showing all. Oh, now I play bass. I do this. Check out all the stuff I do. Ready right. to like just show the whole range of things. And um, he says, have some advice for you if you want it. And I went, it's like in my DMs. Sure. All ears. The Gary V shit's hilarious. Lean into it and make a ton of it. And then mm-hmm. build up your base to like 50, 100K. Once you get to that kind of place on your platform, you could start unrolling other stuff. Mm-hmm. And I thought about that and I was like, huh. I guess in a way it's like your hit song. So like really play the hit song and, and like build the audience off of it. You know, don't necessarily, and I didn't want to like be defined by this one impression, but at the same time, I got the idea. I understood the idea that when you have a hit song, like play the hit song. And I noticed I started doing more. Ga- so I, Took that advice to heart, and I made another Gary Vee video, and another one. Oh, and you've since made another Gary Vee video? I've since made another one. So I made a, <laughs> I since made, I just committed, like, let me challenge myself to making more on this subject. Yeah. And I noticed every time I posted one, mm-hmm. new people who had never heard it were reacting. Holy shit. Like, right. I still get that till this day. People hearing it and have never heard it before. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So I, th- I thought when you get the sense that, oh, everyone's heard it already. It's old news. It's really not. It's just, it's brand new. It's a right. brand new hit that you have that is working. The, the, the warning on that is you don't want to let your content control you. You want to control your content. So you don't want to say, like, I, the second I caught myself, like, waking up the morning saying, okay, what Gary V video can I do yeah. today? I would try something else, and I would watch out for that and take breaks and whatever. It's, it, it's an interesting point in the conversation about whether <clears throat> TikTok and, and Instagram are art because, I mean, th- that truly is, like, almost the opposite of art, of just being like, what do people want? Give them more of it? But I don't think so. Anytime you're creating something, it's art. Well, but- I would... Okay, well, ma- that that that's I don't I don't I don't agree with that. But you don't agree that anytime you make something it's art if you create no, something? I don't think so. Really? I, I, I would When I would, Picasso would, was asked what is art, he replied, What isn't? I would put I, I think he might say <laughs> making TikToks. Oh. <laughs> no, no, well I, I would I would say there's there's an important part of being an artist of like finding your market and like I would call that part of it building audience. Mm-hmm. Which is which is uh, through what? which is part of, through, of beca- being a professional artist. Yeah. Through, through art. <laughs> um, you make something and you find a lot of people respond yeah. to it so you make more of it there is a give and take when you're building an audience it's sort of like you're entertaining people yeah that's building an audience but I, I would say but if, not, if, if not you're not distinct. purely following your instinct then it's not necessarily art uh, I, there, there, it's, it's, it's a mixture it's a mixture it's commerce or something like that you know whatever not, it's not, product not to say that commerce if you want to be, this is what we talk about. If you want to be a professional artist, you have to think about commerce. Yeah, but it's I, I would I would call that squarely I, in the commerce consideration. I hear you. Wow. I don't know if it's healthy to think of it so hierarchical in such a hierarchical term. Like, oh, mm-hmm. on the highest form, you're just making it, not giving a crap about anybody. If you want to be a professional, you are thinking about that. But it's not necessarily like one is superior to well, the there's other. There's a difference between professional artist and artist. Sure, but in the end, if you're, I think it's about what you're making and the result. It's like if you make something. You make something. Well, like if you're organizing sound, you're making music. Well, it's the boundaries and, that and your you intentions set, that you set for yourself. But your intentions going into it, yes, and your calculations and all yeah. these kinds of things. Fine. My point is, artistically, I didn't want to become so one dimensional. So I was conscious of the fact that I wouldn't wake up in the right. morning and say I have to make. I wanted to be funny. I wanted mm-hmm. to like my goal was to make people laugh. That was the art. The art was was comedy. So I was into making people laugh. And if I thought of a Gary V, if I thought of a Gary V video idea that was funny, yeah. I put it out. I just didn't hold back on that. Mm-hmm. I didn't get worried about too much Gary Vee. If it was mm-hmm. funny, I did it. And I rarely, I would catch myself. I'd rarely try to say like, okay, like, but it isn't Gary Vee. Let me, how do I make this Gary Vee-ish? I'd always lead with the funny. Like if I watched the Gary Vee thing and it was funny, and if I didn't that day, I didn't do it. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I would challenge myself. Like, what's funny about this? Oh, that is funny. And I would do that. And it is tempting. And every t- a lot of TikTokers can like, you know, attest to this. It's tempting to say, okay, I could put out this one or I could put out this one. And I have a sense that this one might explode. Mm-hmm. In any event, so everyone has to deal with that. It's not the worst problem in the world. But I did lean, I took the advice to heart and leaned mm-hmm. into it and found that, it, it, you know, it was a funny thing. It kind of became like CEO of Gary Vee Impressions, this guy. And it, that's fun. It's all good. Mm-hmm. Like I was enjoying playing the hit song. Fast forward 
two years later, shall we? Because I've been posting now, not not a Gary V video every single day, but a lot of Gary V. And it kind of became this TikTok Instagram presence where I uh, was getting the attention of Team Gary V and Gary V himself. And he would laugh at certain videos and comment. And some of his people would reach out sometimes just like reacting, loving this. Ha ha ha. Oh my God, still hustling, dude. Holy crap. But it, it took about, you know, like 2019 to 2022. And it wasn't like constant Gary V, but a lot of consistent output of content and then over the t over over those yeah. years creating that awareness and getting known for certain things which is okay and what sort of feedback are you getting so gary v's gary v's laughing but like what why are you feeling like you keep doing it because there's some sort of progress you're making what kind of progress have you been, how are you making during that time how would you define, it wasn't always leading it? to vcon vcon wasn't even a concept no no yeah but, yeah but but meaning you would have if, if you weren't Right, oh, so, so, so tell was, me, what, what, the progress what, in general where was it going? was higher engagement, more mm -hmm. followers, more people noticing my work, uh -huh. more opportunities because of it, mm -hmm. either directly related to like a Gary Vee impression, somebody, hey, can you, can you do this cameo for me as Gary Vee, and also Jordan uh -huh. Peterson, and all the, all the stuff I was doing was right. getting much more attention, because cool. as you bring in more eyes, they see everything you do. So the more you did, People were noticing the band, people were doing everything, you're getting people, you're getting attention. Mm -hmm underpriced attention <laughs> you're getting attention yeah. and that's cool and people and validation people are really liking what you're doing and it's great yeah. because you're building this audience so that was the real reward the, yeah. the real reward is that process over time as it builds and builds and builds yeah and then of course led to us doing the podcast and building off of that because this provides an outlet for both of us to kind of express ourselves in a more open format and all of these it just kind of unleashed a big door of river of creativity that i did wasn't able to unleash beforehand without mm -hmm. these platforms and the whole time also learning about TikTok and learning about what it did was it, it turned me into a content creator mm -hmm. in, in a broad, more general sense. In addition, like, you know, and music is a part of that. Yeah. But thinking about it more about an audience and content creation. Yeah. And it really taught me that, like, in a very refreshing way, it's not one person who green lights you to success. Like, you're the conduit and you're the person who builds the audience. And it's not like, oh, and then that makes it that not every single person you meet who's like an important executive in an industry, oh, it's, oh, you get all hyped up on that one thing and then you get disappointed. And that mm -hmm. makes everybody less intimidating. It makes every opportunity that you, you know, less things are at stake all the time. And that also, fast forwarding to Beacon for a second, it made it much more relaxed in the sense that not, well, you meet a person cool, you don't, you don't, whatever. It's like, it makes that whole overzealous nature of having to meet everyone thinking mm -hmm. they're the person that's going to make you a hit or whatever. It, that makes it all it, it takes the edge off of all yeah. of that because you realize oh what it really takes is this building up an audience very slowly organically over time and having a lot of patience and wherewithal to stick through it and i'm like and then you're the one in power the whole time even though it takes a long time so i want right. to sort of move it along a little bit just to get to vervicon app and eventually behind the scenes i was talking to certain people on the team who were putting this this conference together and props to gary v for seeing it all the way through you know there's a lot of things that are fun ideas and exciting ideas. And they, they just, there's a phrase in the industry, everything almost happens. Everything almost happens. This happened, this, so so many things that could have gone wrong, it didn't happen. But from its inception, mm -hmm. the conversation continued of having me and another impersonator, Nima, Naz, shout out, we both did it together. Yeah. Getting all the way through to have us, the, 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 the idea was born the of number having- number one and number two. Uh, um. <laughs> You've been making this. Th it doesn't bother me like it thinks. Um, there's another guy. I didn't on say who's number one and who's number two. You, you were going I there. Know Be is. honest with yourself. You were going there. Um, no. So there's another guy who was doing Gary V impressions on TikTok too. Nima Naz, a comedian yeah. from Toronto. And then him and once Gary V, it was all building up on his end too. He gave us shout outs as leading like on on various platforms, and I think mm -hmm. that was strategic, but also genuine. He was like very moved by all these impressions going on about him. Gave us shout outs, tagged us in videos. So there were these like moments along the way that are very rewarding as you grind and do this daily you get these cool moments oh gary v featured you in a video very cool they talked about it on flagrant two podcast and Ser serious question by the way yeah um is, is there like a third and fourth person that's doing this like pretty like regularly gary v impressions yeah or is it just you two it's real i don't know that yeah. in, in one of gary v's videos he, he tagged two other a couple of other people who've right. done it I think me and him have done it the most. You're like you're the most dedicated, most okay. presence, and the most like output of it. Right. Trevor Wallace, a big content creator, did like a one-off video that did really well and mm -hmm. got a lot of views, and it was very funny. And he talked about that one too. But at that point, Trevor also already had a big audience, and yeah. that, so that video did really well in terms of views. But either way, he started talking about it, and then there were messages, and we're talking with coordinators, 
And the idea is born of doing the opening of VCon to have me, Gary, and Nima open the v- open the VCon uh, conference as a fake out thing. And Nima came out first as fake Gary, Gary Series Two. I came out as Gary Series Three. We had a whole moment. Yeah. Me, Nima, and Gary all together doing a whole opening skit for the whole conference, thousands of people mm-hmm. at the U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, 2019. I posted. <laughs> Huh. No, I'm like, I'm, I'm, it was like a little stage in a huge football stadium. <laughs> right, but it was, it was a lot of people. It just it, no, no. It's funny to there was like ten thousand. Oh yeah, yeah. US Bank it, Stadium. It was a huge crowd. Just yes. when I'm thinking, remembering it, yes, it's yes, like yes. that's true. I couldn't. Felt when they silly. said US Bank Stadium, I'm like, oh, how many people are coming yeah. to this? Eighty thousand people <laughs> in the first inaugural conference. That's impressive. So it was the floor. It was the floor of the stadium. Of the stadium. Um, Having said that, but people, yeah. It was pretty cool. It was awesome. I was in the crowd. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's so cool, but it was so pretty, like, brilliant, because if you're at VCon, mm-hmm. you're a fan of Gary Vee, and if you're a fan of Gary Vee, you're on TikTok, mm-hmm. and if you're a fan of Gary Vee on TikTok, you know who Nima and Ami, and Ami are. Yes. So everyone in the crowd knew exactly who you guys were. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just some, like, silly sketch of, like, oh, these guys are impersonating the guy. That's funny. It was, like... Oh, Gary brought them here. That's yeah. so cool. They knew Gary. the story. They, get the, they, they were holding. They immediately got it, and people loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in the crowd taping it. And, You're also uh, backstage, Michael. Don't don't sell yourself short. Well, yeah, well, we'll get there, too. Mm, but okay. I was just, the crowd loved it, and mm-hmm. they were, um, you, got, you guys really killed it. Thank um, you. And then, uh, and then, um, and then Gary came on stage. Yeah. You guys had, like, a, a three-way. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, yeah. How, so how'd it feel? How'd it feel to be on there? Uh, how did it feel? I'm still kind of processing it. Um, but I will say this. It felt, it felt right. I wasn't overwhelmed. I wasn't underwhelmed. This was one of the rare occasions where mm-hmm. expectations and reality were fully simpatico. It really felt exactly like I expected it to feel. And I think having like 10 plus years in the game on the music side through all those other exciting moments in like that first round. And you asked me this over the weekend, like doing a couple of years in comedy and compared to the music journey and kind of weighing those two things. But it's sort of like that put me in a position where I've been in the office with head executives and feeling like this is the moment. Oh, this is the moment waiting for that romantic moment that you see in the movies and entertainment where somebody green lights it and boom, mm-hmm. uh, you're, you've made it. And I kind of got that out of my system in a sense to a healthier place where, um, where I was in this moment feeling like I belonged there after the years of work doing it. And it felt just very appropriate to be there doing it. And I almost looked at Gary like a contemporary in a sense. Obviously, he's much wealthier than I am and much more well-known. But I felt like a professional doing right. my part as part of the conference. Yeah. Um, and I will say, not to give everybody's hopes up here, but... You know, there's a part of you that thinks you're going to open your phone and you're going to have like zillions of followers after something like this. And that's not the case. Yeah, so how yeah, how'd you do? You know? How have you been doing since then on TikTok? <sighs> My Instagram crashed. I have to redo it. No, I'm just kidding. I, uh, I, it wasn't like that. It's not the overnight. <laughs> Does that happen to people? No, <laughs> people get hacked. I don't know what I meant to say. In other words, there was a part of you that's always tempted to say, so what's going to happen now? And I think yeah. now it's not the end it's the beginning again, top of the hill, foot yeah. of the mountain. So now I've gotten a little bit of this interesting moment here. Thank God I brought somebody with me to document it all. And I'm going to roll out the content in the next few weeks yeah. of everything that occurred. And I'm sure in the long run, it's going to make this big, obviously it's going to make a big difference, but it's not this immediate thing, even this. So like obvi- more people are coming in and more people are starting to follow, but it's not like this. And after VCon turned on my phone and there I was, right. it's more like after VCon, it was like a nice, huge moment. Yeah on this journey and now i keep my head down and keep working right. and all the benefits of it will i will feel but it's not instantaneous the way people think so like everyone's like dude you're after this you're gonna just be made it's like people have this it's just not the right. case well it's funny i guess because the and the, that's even with the, gary the, reposting the it the and all audience the, was there yeah and exactly. they already follow you i guess that's well, a part of it too. talkless though i yeah. that's all nice how many i'm just curious did you get ten thousand followers did you get a hundred oh. did you get yeah, Closer maybe a thousand or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like it's coming in. I'm just I'm curious what that what that. They're means. all coming in, and with each video I post, it brings more people in and oh, stuff. Yeah? But okay. it's not like I didn't get disproportionately more right. in terms of followers. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and that's okay. I'm not like I'm, I I don't expect yeah, no, that. I know that. Yeah, we know that. It, but it, I'm not quantifying it that way. What but what it did happen was I made a lot of connections and opportunities, and I think the next phase of whatever this content creation journey I'm on is is has begun. That's mm. what it did feel like because I met certain people who and I had certain conversations at VCon after this whole performance that were exciting to me and promising. One thing that was the best thing about it was. I didn't have to explain myself to anybody after this. I stayed in character for large chunks of econ and made a lot of fun videos with people pretending to be Gary, and that was great, and I bumped into Gary. Had a few more interactions with Gary throughout, which yeah. were great. And um, and it's just that when you're walking... I've been at these conferences before as an attendee, and one thing that's nice about having like a, a bracelet on that allows you to go backstage and hang yeah. out in the talent green room and stuff is you just you don't have to explain yourself as yeah. much to people. You don't have to sort of make your case. And, what brings you, and you have to say, oh, I'm this musician and comedian, and I actually came here. I, I, that was kind of known, yeah. and so so that yeah. Wait, so this this is a weird conversation because yeah. we're ha we we were both there, so yes. we don't have to recap it for ourselves. But we also want the listeners to understand yes. what we're talking about. Yes. So it's gonna it's gonna be weird. But but just as like backing up, yeah. What what this thing was and and our part in it, yes yes, yes. was like Vicon is Gary Vaynerchuk. He's an entrepreneur. He started. He was very early on YouTube helping his father's wine business blow up. He moved on from YouTube to create a social media marketing agency that helped other people figure it out. Mm -hmm. And he's basically like a trend spotter. Mm -hmm. So like he's able to see what's going to be popular, buy into it in some way, and then sell it in some way. He did it with basketball cards or whatever. Yes, cards. and he's had a very good track right, record. After building up his father's wine business, he then, I think, invested in early early investor in Facebook and right. other early tech and made, did well with that. Yeah. And then was able to use some of that experience in giving advice and going on speaking tours right. and doing these kinds of things after the experience of building up a business and having and being able to spot those right. trends. And so his new trends are NFT. Yeah. NFTs, he launched his own NFT collection. What are NFTs, Michael? So we'll talk about that yeah. also. So, Jeez, we um, will. Yeah, because so I still don't yeah, know, and yeah, I've been right. at a conference. Yes, yeah, so that's part of the context there. Yeah. He launched his own NFT. He made ninety million dollars overnight, and he and he's going to continue making tens of millions of dollars for a very long time because that's yeah. the way NFTs are structured. And then he to kind of celebrate this thing, this space, this space, and and partly celebrate himself, partly mm -hmm. celebrate the space and his community. Partly, you once you sell an NFT, the point is you're supposed to create utility through it. Mm -hmm. Partly celebrate his NFT holders. I'm going to create this festival. He called it a conference. It was basically a festival of like, we're going to bring NFTs to the mainstream mm -hmm. with me as the face of it. Mm -hmm. So um, so he had this convention in Minnesota where every NFT holder got to go for free. Plus all these really famous celebrity speakers who are launching their own NFT collections got to go there and promote it. Mm -hmm. And celebrities within the space, influencers, got to speak on these panels. Right. And because you were there, you got a speaker's pass, mm -hmm. which got you backstage the whole time. And as, and a feature, as the featured, like, entertainment portion of it. Right. And yeah. I, and you got to bring a videographer along, mm -hmm. slow-mo. Mm -hmm. And you got one other pass that you gave to me. Yes, I did. So we got to go to this convention that we know nothing about in a space we know very little about. We're the only ones there without tickets. Well, I guess the speakers. Yeah, well, we don't we, own it. Well, you might. We, we, we were probably the low, on the, on the, like, Venn diagram of people who don't have tickets and know very little about NFTs know very little about nfts we were like we were like at the very bottom so it was <laughs> fascinating because we're meeting we like walk up to this person and be like hey man who are you like you know he's like uh, like i'm oh shiny like i have like a million f twitter followers right. and like i'm the I highest invent, selling nft yeah, artist in the game right I invented now invented nfts and he's like, like oh, a celebrity cool, there yeah we're like you look like my friend from queens <laughs> <laughs> and we're like oh cool yeah so, so what's that? <laughs> so we were so we were backstage with these celebrities and these influencers at the hotel where all the influencers were staying yeah. and all the celebrities were staying and we just got I I just got to be there like as a full hanger on. <laughs> you you at least had like a reason for being there. Right. And so that's just the context. And I got of to it. I got to live protect I got to be celebrity for a weekend which was kind of fun. Right. So that's that so kind of maybe neat. that's a cool place to start like <laughs> you're basically you're, you were, I mean, you were a celebrity there. Yeah. Every single person there, when they saw you, got giddy. Yeah. You, you, you bring, you brought glee to people. Glee is a great. They, they just look at you and go, and everyone looks at you and goes, Gary V. Uh, well, some people just said like, dude, and then took, wanted to yeah. take selfies and all that. It's a weird of stuff. thing. They didn't go, hey, AJ, I know you from. It. They went, Gary V. Gary V. Well, what's up, it Gary? Was so weird. Wink, wink. They did. It was very they strange. Did. They did. To be fair. A lot. Some pe uh, people came up to me about other stuff, Jordan Peterson and Alex Jones and those kinds of things. Oh, that okay. did happen too. Yeah. 
because some people have just seen me from the Gary Vee stuff, but there were a lot of people who also like just follow all my stuff. One guy was backstage and was just like, so you're releasing some records this year with the band? Like some people were d- dove deeper and that was cool. Um, I think the Gary Vee thing was like a wink wink because when I was out of character, yeah. more people called me that. As like, Gary, doing some impressions there, Gary? So, Pers- or I walk by people and they're like, perspective, perspective. You know, <laughs> which is, by the way, it's, it's kind of like a good way to understand the whole scene there, which is like people are like, pretty like silly and open Mm -hmm. like they're the kind of people who would go like i know you're not gary v but i'm gonna play along with it yeah hey gary v like the whole scene was really and i could turn it on and everyone's just instantly giggling it was pretty pretty great but and the the type of person there was was just like that sort of person to go hey gary v that's true of of conferences i'm into it was not stuck up it was very open very friendly and it was the first of its kind and i think it was like in a way it felt like real life instagram all these people who I've been following and I've never seen their face before in the flesh were, like, there. Yeah. A lot of people were like that, even on the music side and, like, in this sort of content creator zone. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I, that per- yeah, you're... And I know them by, like, their usernames, like, real-life usernames mm-hmm. all walking around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, where are we? It almost felt like this dream. Like, yeah. am I going, was it this dream last night where everybody knew who I was and everybody knew Gary <laughs> V and, like, it was real-life Instagram. But, like, and everyone's got cameras and everyone's filming and everyone's doing yeah. wacky stunts. It, it, you know, it, it was, it was neat. That was the other weird part of it. <laughs> like, so you brought along a videographer, yeah. which was totally normal. Yeah. Every, almost every per, every person that spoke had a videographer, right. and everyone there was a content creator. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah. Like, and are on, on Twitter, and then they're like, with a little lav mic, they're like, "Hey, yeah. can you just t- t- for my people? I'm, I'm live here. Yeah. We met like Twitch gamers uh, that were fascinating. Yeah. We've been building oh, yeah. up audiences. Yeah. That was wild." It like was, we're we're old enough to, to to we're old enough to to remember a time before this social media. So like when you meet someone and they're like, Oh yo man, like what are you on Twitter? Let me follow you. There's definitely a circuit in my brain that goes like, Ah, oh, come on, man, that's lame. So really? Like, yeah, yeah, th- yeah, for in sure. What sense? It could there's there's still a little bit of like like I remember when being on Facebook Facebook was like very not cool when mm-hmm. I first came out. Like like you like yeah. geek. Like mm. you're gonna be on social media, like you know that's not like a real thing. So yeah, right. a thing still goes on of like, t- like be cool about it. Mm-hmm. But this was like very geeky, like, like no one was cool about social media. It was like very present in every person's life there, mm-hmm. and it was like I create content, I care about my followers on Twitter, yeah. I care about I care about my content creation, and that's my life. And like it was pretty cool to like. To just like be in, like, it was so out there. One thing that was cool also was the people I met, I felt like in the pre social media age, when people got any kind of fame or attention, it was through like these bigger entities and institutions that would put them on a hit sitcom. And then seemingly overnight, they go from obscurity to, oh, they have all this attention. And so everybody kind of wants a piece, whether they really know what they do or not. And I felt like here, there have been people there who were coming up to me that really knew and were familiar with my, my work. Mm-hmm. So they felt like fans that weren't like fanboying or fangirling. It was more like, I've been following for a while, man. I've seen, like, they're like, you know, it felt like a little community of people that have watched a lot of my videos that I've yeah. made laugh many times. It wasn't like, oh, that's Ami Kozak. Who where? Let me go say hi. To-. It right. didn't feel that way. Right. It, felt, it, felt, it felt good, but it also felt like not artificial or surface level it felt like people who came up to me didn't just say like that's some like some of the panelists sometimes they get attention for like oh because they're like i just want to be in the presence of celebrity and it's not like they know anything about pharrell's records but it's pharrell you got to go over to pharrell yeah that's the that was like and that's the kind i wouldn't desire to be ever mobbed like that or have that but it feels like in the tiktok space that people it's like very niche you're creating these audiences of people who really know and appreciate what you've done. Yeah. So I love where that's going, that it's yeah. niche. And then you could walk outside of the VCon and go have breakfast somewhere and have a normal life. And I'm not compare. I don't mean to compare myself. Yeah. Maybe I do. But I'm just yeah. saying the experience that I'm having, I think, is unique to now, where I'm in a niche place that's niche upon niche upon niche of people yeah. in this space, of course, are all going to know who I am. And now it was cool to be validated that they know who I am because it means that they're following and watching and enjoying the work, and it's yeah. reaching people. Completely. And this validated all of that. Yeah. Now they're going to go pay me. <laughs> as opposed... Because I even went to be like, I know Gary yeah. V's like, Lodi, I'm broke as shit. Let's go. <laughs> Cough it up, bitch. Put your money where your fucking mouth is. <laughs> and then as opposed to backstage, Deepak Chopra mm. came into the building 
backstage it was like you could tell something was happening yes was when a, an a-lister was coming there's a rush of energy right yes. he he couldn't move without pe- without like yes. an escort he gets on he goes on stage no one from backstage went out to hear him speak right everyone went back to like network amongst themselves exactly so clearly they're not fans they just want the cash yeah right as opposed to you're walking around and people are like i know your work yeah. and i want to chill with you yeah, yeah yeah and that was cool it was cool because it was semi new for me to on that level to feel like my god yeah. it has worked so my main point here is, and then I stayed in character throughout the conference, doing more content, having more fun, ran some auctions as Gary V, which mm-hmm. was a lot of fun. I didn't understand what I was saying because it's NFTs, and we're just like, right. So you, <laughs> right, so you walked away with, with gaining 0% knowledge about NFTs. I don't think that's true. <laughs> and I know so because when asked about it, I actually explained it, and I'm like, that makes a lot of sense what I just said. Huh. I, I didn't, I don't know if it's because of the event that I really yeah. got it, but I see what you do see is sort of, value on display you see people valuing something and it's hard to quantify what an nft is Mm -hmm. but if it's this if it's access to experiences if it means that somebody can monetize their value and everyone becomes their own form of their own currency i sort of can understand conceptually what's going on the hard thing is there's a difference between nfts here in one area and artists because one thing that was fascinating here is NFT is digital art, mm. in, at least on the surface. A lot of the first projects, right, are, are drawings and pictures and photographs. People. People, right? He was there. Be- people. People. Yeah. People. People. Yeah. So he he's, went, an, he's, a, he's an artist, yeah. though. So when I, I, it's not easy to, it's not hard to make that jump. Like, what's NFTs? Oh, it's these art collectibles that people can buy and it can give them access. Because in the other spaces that it, it wants to be a part of, it's a harder, it's, it's a harder bridge to gap. Mm-hmm. What? Gap to bridge. It, it's a harder to bridge that gap of... Gap to bridge. It's harder to bridge <laughs> the gap in the space of music as NFTs as opposed yeah. to art. But some of the art and the artists that I met have I feel like it's incredibly cool work. Yeah. So it's, it's not like it's like, it's, it, it, some people are like, oh, it's meaningless. It doesn't, it's not worth anything. I'm like, well, some of these artists are insanely talented and yeah. now they're being emancipated and given this platform of NFTs to make tons of money yeah, on their art. A, we met a photographer who like spends like a week at a time in like remote Alaska yeah. getting like um, photographs. And, right. sh- and she was like, I finally was able to support myself yeah. by selling my photographs as NFTs and like I make a living. What's her name? Any idea? We have to tag it. Shima Chimsa. No, I don't. It was in, the photo photographs blew yeah, my we'll mind. T- we'll put a link in the thing. Yeah, yeah these we definitely should. Now, in, now I photographs. know why she's at a conference like this. I yeah. know why she's there. She's an artist, and in the world of like, yeah. you know, art collectibles and trying to do that, she's trying to like make money on the art and yeah. and sell them as NFTs. But the idea being that somebody can put out a fixed amount of something, and there's a there's a shortage in it, and it has its own value, and if it can get you access to different things, whether it's experiences or even as itself looking pretty or all those mm-hmm. kinds of things, it can mean something. And it's so in the baby stages. Just like if you were in 99 trying to explain the internet, you wouldn't be able to. Now we can, but you couldn't then. Yeah. But I it think, was real. Yeah, I like, um, I, have, I have a lot to say about this. I guess we, we can start with like... Um, so before we move on to the con- conceptualizing of it, we can wrap up the VCon experience okay. and just say... That was awesome. <laughs> It was. Oh, it was a. Sur- it, I don't want to call it surreal. It wasn't surreal. No. It was just awesome. Yeah. It was just awesome. It was just awesome. And uh, what I loved about it is in so many. In the lessons and the takeaways is the proof is in the pudding. I think it validated a lot of the things we say here about consistency. I keep mm-hmm. doing this tweet about and the videos I share. I, wrote, I write like it's a it's a generic phrase, but I don't know who came up with it or if I came up with it. But it's hard work works. Mm-hmm. And. If I ever needed an indicator that the consistency matters, it does something, it's different than what I did before of just wanting things and thinking about it, putting out one random thing here, one random thing there. Look what happened. Like, it got me up there on a main stage in front of all these people and then making all these incredible relationships and forming this and having this incredible experience along the way. And I don't think it's the end goal. It's just one amazing (laughs) moment along the way. But it works. Consistency on a few levels. You were consistently trying, mm-hmm. then you found something that worked, and you consistently refined it. Yeah, and then and then something good happened. Right, or something exciting happened from it. Because you get that question: How did you? How did this happen? Everyone thinks it's like, well, well who greenlit this? How did this? And it's all of it yeah. made it happen. And it was nice. That was a nice takeaway too. Not only doing the performance yeah. and being having that opportunity at that level to do it. 
but the fact that everyone there knew who I was. And, then, <laughs> and for me, it was good also because, like, for me, it was a lesson. And you, sometimes you don't have to do anything, and you, and you just and you just get to go wherever you want. Because <laughs> what you? Yeah, like I don't I don't ever do TikTok. I yeah. rarely do TikTok, but I had. I still had that experience, and that's special. You're welcome. And that's special. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Sometimes just sit back and let your friends do stuff. But that's I don't think you. I don't lesson. think I would have even thought to ask you to come if we weren't doing this podcast. That's true. And we've been doing this podcast every single week, episode thirty for that's since true. the summer. That's true. It's not true. Just because we're buds. It is true. <laughs> so it's, I'm saying it's not true that no, you just no, got yeah, to go no, because of enough, no effort. Enough, yeah. I mean, maybe it wouldn't have been relevant. I would have just told you about it as a friend. Hey, guess what? I got this crazy. Hey, tell me right. I was VCon. I would have just told you. Right. But I wouldn't have thought like maybe Michael wants to come. But you do now because we discussed this thing. That's so it is the effort. It's a good point. All right. So don't sell yourself short. It's a good point. You're gonna be my professional friend for the rest of your life. <laughs> um, so just to wrap up on that, yeah. it made it was a very nice uh, v- validation of all the things that. It gives street cred to all those things that Gary V himself talks about. Right. It's like, just be patient and keep working. Mm-hmm. As hard as that is to hear and a hard of a pillow that is to swallow, be patient and keep working. And then you find things you're better at and stay consistent. And it's not like it just fell into my lap, but in a way I get it. It's, it's, and if I made that one viral video, there was a temptation after it went, I was like, Ugh. I like wanted to back off of it. It's mm-hmm. like so much attention out of nowhere. And I'm like, what, what do I do? T- going back to that first video. And I had to fight through that yeah. and just keep going. What if the next video is not as fun? What if it doesn't, you know, may- and the next video didn't do as well. And then you just keep going. And it's like, yeah. that's harder too. Anyway. So that, yeah, I will. I was, V-Con. I was very proud of you and oh. excited for you to see how that experience it was. It was very cool. It was very cool. <laughs> it was it was it was something else. It's cool. Your greatest performance, by the way, of the weekend was a uh, Shabbos lunch at Chabad. <laughs> <laughs> I that, killed. That was your stage. Oh my, that's where I belong. Yeah. I, we we both we think I I walked out after and I went. Was do you think that was the best Shabbos lunch they've ever had? At Chabad. <laughs> well, there was nice moments like that too. We got to eat at the University of Minnesota Chabad, and I'm like, here we are wonderful. finding our Shabbos wherever we go. Forget that. Also, the hang me, you, and Shlomo. What a team! Shlomo yeah. Weber and Shlomo Motion's incredible filmmaker. Um, yeah, we'll put his link in there. You know, the as me, the the comic, him, the filmmaker, and Michael, the posse hang. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> but you're covering it. You're going to write your own stuff about it, which is yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. And also, you were you knew stuff that I didn't know. Well, I went. I went. <laughs> you knew stuff about this world I didn't know. I went because this is the kind of thing that sets me. I'm set off. Like, I'm set off for months. Like, I'm in NFT Twitter right now. Yeah. Like, um, I, 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 a, a friend reached out to me. I didn't even know he was into NFTs. Like, yeah. he sent me a bunch of NFT. I have, like, an NFT domain name now. Like, I, I'm like... You were speaking the language, and I was like, oh, Michael. Like, yeah, I, well, I'm interested in this stuff. Yes. Well, so... You're interested in quick money and minimal effort. I understand <laughs> it. <laughs> um, no, well, I'm interested in it. But you're also into new spaces and well, new frontiers. Well, here's what it is. In growing up... Um, Shifting into the space as a boy, and you know, no, no, growing, growing up as the, a boy, the, the people who did business, it seemed. Uh, you correct me if I'm wrong. It seemed like to do business, yeah. you needed to be this a- aggressive, loud banking type. That's like that was like the stereotypical. Like you want to go into business, or you you're like oh, you got sales. Yeah, you got to be out there, man. Like people gotta like you. You gotta be friendly. You can't be uh-huh. like in the corner, like quiet, man. You gotta like do it. Right. Like that's like when I like the when machismo. I at, like Morgan St- or. Uh, where did I, oh, Smith Barney. Yeah, yeah, it was like it's like, what are you doing here, man? Like, what are you like, some kind of like artsy guy? And and then and then so we're not Italian, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're in Dina. Hey, hey, fucking guys, you gotta go work this. Shabbat shalom. What you got that holiday? That Put the like, herring on the cracker and shove that in your ass. Well, it's Long on. Island, I guess. What's Long Island? Long Island is more like Jewish Long Island. It's mm-hmm. a little bit different. The okay. T's and R's are different. It's Long yeah. Island. Listen, what you want going to hedge funds? <laughs> the, the S is longer It's okay. longer It's not longer It's not yeah. like fucking Hey Andrew Dice Clay Motherfucker It's not, it's not normal It's not normal It's not normal it's I, not So normal. you wonder what I, A lot of it's hedge funds now yeah. Now Wow Okay yeah, A lot right. of it's There's hedge funds Dylan. More nasal yeah. A lot of it's hedge funds And I, I, I banking Mergers and acquisitions Whatever you want to do Yeah so, so, so that's what it was And, th- and then <laughs> social media comes out And there was this merging Yeah Of like the product minded person Of like the more thoughtful maybe quiet, more introverted person who can, like, put themselves in the shoes of a user, Mm -hmm. those were the people that were able to build really successful mobile apps. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'd start going to these meetups and, like, out of college, 2009, 2010, 2011, and, like, the types of people who were elevated were not these salesy people. Mm. They were kind of these, like, thoughtful, designy, nerdy types. And I was like, oh, this is, like, this is cool. Like, And you identified more. I fit in more here. And, and, And I wasn't, by the way, I wasn't, like... Good. I wasn't a good product person. Like, 
like they, they tended to be very detail oriented and organized and like but personality wise but personality was I got along with them really well right like I was like I was like I like going to these events this is fun now like so let's call that v2 this is like web 3 v3 and like it's really cool because the people who are elevated here are are like even more artsy. Asperger's, yeah. <laughs> no, no, they're more artsy. They're like they're literal artists. Mm-hmm. They're photographers. They're designers. They're like. But there also could be silent assassins, which I think appeals to you. You what seem you to like this idea that some guy secretly made zillions oh. and no one even heard his name. So, so it's like so. So that's it's like the collector mind of mm-hmm. someone who can like see value way before anybody else. Who also tend to be these outsider, sort of quiet, thoughtful people. Mm-hmm like combined with like an artist it's like it was like an even cooler scene and i'm like really i didn't really realize that about it Mm. and like the same way in 2010 i got turned on by like the tech scene in new york i feel like turned on again by like oh wow this is like a new movement where a new type of person is going to be elevated Mm -hmm. and like i fit in even more and like that's really fucking cool and i'm really (laughs) excited about it so that that's like so I, i came away with it like as a writer like like a seeing like the new characters and the new worlds and like a new space to write about and like to be inspired in that way. Um, that's kind of why I went just to see mm-hmm. it for myself. Yes. Um, that's why you went to Occupy Wall Street to look, look at that. Yeah, you yeah, like for sure. I like being, yeah. it's, it's cool to be in a place as it's happening. Sure. Not like, like looking back and historically imagine like, you know, recapping on what happened, yeah. but to be there when something is happening and no one can really make sense of it or explain yeah. it, but they know that the, it felt like we we're in some weird transitional yeah. space. And we were like, I don't know where we are, but for, something for is sure. happening. In, in 10 years, Beeple isn't going to be able to walk through U.S. Bank Stadium without security. You think so? I don't think so. And, like, just as a side note, I look like, I apparently I look like this photographer named Justin. Yeah. So people backstage, he's like this OG yeah. Web3 photographer. So everyone was coming up to me and being like, do I know you from somewhere? Oh, you're not him, are you? So Beeple walked by me, and uh, he, he was walking, stopped in his tracks, looked at me, and went, Hey, what's up, man? And People then, said that to you? And, and then walked away. I got to and tickle him back. to me like, who are you? I went up to him back uh, in the green yeah, room yeah, and started yeah. making him giggle. But so, maybe so yeah. we, have a- we had access to these people that are not going to be accessible in a little while. Um, what about and it's cool. <laughs> it was fun to see people also. So much neon. Yeah, so colors. much like, like, like a 55-year-old man in neon shorts and flip-flops who was worth $2 billion because yeah. he drew pictures of pigeons. Yeah. And you're like, huh? <laughs> and you're like, yeah. Or, or like, you know, a 17-year-old kid with no shoes who <laughs> plays Minecraft and is worth $2 billion. Yeah. And he's, like, like walking around. Or a 9-year-old. I'm like, what? where? It, felt, it was a dream. Yeah. Like, where are we? And what is this? Some guy's yeah. wearing moon boots. <laughs> I don't understand it. But you know who seems to understand it is Gary V. He seems to be... The weird thing is yeah. he seems to be, like, fully aware. Like, this all makes perfect sense to him. And that was interesting. And one thing... T- people I'll keep asking me, like, so what's it really like? And I will give credit where it's due in that... Like, there's a lot of celebrities or people you've seen on camera for years. And then you meet them. And it's not like they're better or worse, but they're different. They look different. They present different. Because you're used to seeing them behind a screen, maybe in makeup or on set, Mm -hmm. and then you see them, you're like, oh, that that is him or her, but something's, like, different about them. Maybe they have a different personality, Mm -hmm. like, than all the characters you've seen them portray, and maybe they're shyer than you thought or whatever, or totally different, or their voice is different. But Gary's not. Like, Gary, what you see is is what you get. And someone, I was on a podcast earlier today, and somebody asked me that, like, what was it? Was it easy the same as he's on camera? And obviously, when someone's on camera, sometimes they're amping it up for a message. But overall, like, in the genuine good way, I didn't feel that way when I met him. I felt like I was like I felt like he had stepped like through the phone and he was like in the room and yeah. it was like the same. He looks just as exhausted in person as he does <laughs> he, on he camera. He looks exhausted. <laughs> and you said to his credit, he gave everybody a lot of himself. It's right, a righteous man. He, <laughs> I mean, he said, "If you buy my NFT, you get to meet me." He yeah. stood for six, seven, eight hours yes. while everyone in the conference waited online to take and a selfie with him and talk to him. Wasn't even photo ops. He like looked somebody in the eye. You know, yeah. it's like a rebbe. You know? and, so, and he like is talking to them and and and. <laughs> listening and giving yeah. back advice pertinent to those people and i was watching and like he he would smile he would someone would talk to him he would smile and listen give them a real smile mm-hmm. they would leave the second they left the smile disappeared 
And but but like so it, maybe it wasn't the most genuine smile, but he tried to give everyone attention and he really tried to listen. He's a human being, Michael. And, no, no, yeah, I'm saying to his credit, like he, he don't he insult tried, Daddy V. He didn't have to smile. He, <laughs> yeah, he could have yes. been like, "Listen, man, I'm here. Yeah, what do you yeah. want from me?" Yeah, no, yeah, like, but you're saying he he worked. He engaged. He, he engaged worked every single it. person, and it was pretty. And he had cool. His parents there and stuff. And it was just, that part was cute too. Like the family were into, we got to meet and and yeah. and you're just like. It, that part is surreal. Like also, like it's very hard at that. I feel like at that level with that kind of adoration. <laughs> what adoration? How would you say? It? Ad- adoration. Adoration. <laughs> adoration. That sounds like it's with a T. Adoration. A- adoration. Expectation. Maybe it's too much Gary V in my system. But to not be tempted to use all that unconditional like love you fostered and. I think he spoke about this on podcast too, like getting into this space of inspirational, that guru space, the self-help world is full of people who aren't genuine. Yeah. And it's a, it's a snake oily world that you have to be careful about. And oftentimes maybe it's the same people watching the wrong people who are watching the right people. Yeah. And it's the same audience. And there's, a t- there's certainly a temptation to kind of slip on being genuine. And he seems to work. It seems to me like he was working hard at, at, Speaking what he like he like he genuinely believed everything he was saying about this space and his excitement and enthusiasm yeah. about the space came from a real place, and on the optics of it, uh, you know, it's easy for cynics yeah. to go in and, and just you know not buy it yeah. or not want to buy it or have trouble believing it. But I'm you know, pretty, I was there, and and this yeah. is like every, and 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 I and a lot of people were ex- excited, enthusiastic, and he's helped a lot of people like who have like real takeaways here. I think people are dying to see him, not just because of super fan celebrityness, but they want to tell him what he did for them. Mm-hmm. That was really impactful, and so, and I saw that firsthand. Yeah. People were like, "I have to go tell him." I, I like he really. It's not just like I want to meet Brad Pitt. Yeah. It's like I want to tell Gary that I read this book and I read this and I watched this and I used to be this way and now I'm this way. And he tells them genuinely that he's proud of that and happy to hear that. Mm-hmm. Like this whole like positivity movement and being kind movement. There was a lot of that messaging, yeah. which a cynic would say that sounds all fluffy and well and good, yeah. but you know. My my question about I him didn't see it that remains way. yeah like um remains whether I don't I, I don't I don't think he's a he's an evil person. <laughs> what the? That's no no, well, no I'm, I'm getting like yes. I I don't think he's a bad guy. The argument you're making of like he's not trying to sell anything and like all that. I wonder if if he's got the brain of a he's got the brain of a gifted con man cult leader. Like he, he was just born with that. He's he sees trends and he knows how to capitalize on that and he knows how to make people. You say he said he saw that and he had that temptation as a young person, but his father. Or no, like, yeah, he said it himself. He, right. Like he 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 was good at had it. Had that and, temptation. And his father raised him out of it, which right. is like which is amazing for his father. Right. But I'm saying he he has the brain and he somehow figured out in 2022 you don't you don't start a cult by trying to sell them something. You start a cult by trying to sell nothing. And like he he's he's going he's going about the same thing just from the completely opposite end. And I don't even mean to say he has bad intentions, but like, but like, I'm I'm not I'm not a hundred percent convinced yet that like he's a saint. Like I I think he, I I I'm really I'm excited and and looking forward to see where he ends up with all this. Mm-hmm. Um, to to like see at the end of the day who Gary V was in the end. Mm-hmm. Like I, like like he he spends eight hours meeting everybody, and I go to he's a saint. He's a, he's a really amazing man. I wonder if if somewhere in his gifted mind he goes, no, like you want people to trust you. This is what you do. <laughs> That's like I wonder. It may be coming from your own cynical outlook on life. Well, well, I mean, a lot of people think that about him. I'm not the only one who thinks that about him. Sure, they do, and I, they and they I'm comment on, and they. I, I got it. comments on my thing like, "Oh, you're just a shill for Gary." I All this time, it. I thought you were calling him a fraud. I'm like, "Well, if you thought I was calling him a fraud, then you don't understand humor." Yeah, yeah. Humor. Yeah. You don't understand. You have no sense of humor. If you thought like my goal in all this was to try to expose, I'm like, "You're, you're, are you kidding me?" Yeah. So, and and, I, and I'll say to your thing like, it's not that he's never trying to sell anything. Of course, like he's entrepreneurially minded. But he's, he's open about that, too. And what I mean is the ratio of stuff Gary gives away for free to what he charges yeah, but is, he, is insane. There is so much advice and hours dedicated yep. to, uh, uh, to him just giving a lot of generous advice and tips and tricks out there and the podcast and all these things that we consume and just take for granted. And my point is he also, like, 
fully admits and is forthright about like wanting to win and wanting to succeed and wanting to make money. And I just think he very much lives and breathes his own message in a lot of ways about being kind, being positive, being generous. There, there, you see a lot of it embodied in how he acts and what he does, like, and what he does for his NFT and like his, for his community. Right. And it's hard for people to, I think it's just hard because we grow up in a world full of pain and, and disappointment. It doesn't mean he's a saint and perfect. I, nobody is, but, but I think he's trying to demonstrate his whole message about being kind and being positive and not giving into hater culture online and all that kind of stuff. Like he's trying, his best thing he could do is live that to prove his own point. Someone who knows him really well, yeah, um, and is like a, a extremely successful business person who's yeah. like older, and he's seen like a bunch of things come and go. Yeah, he said to me at the conference, he's and he, I mean, and he's he knows this guy. He's like, he's like, if you think he wouldn't walk away for ten billion dollars, if someone offered him ten billion dollars right now to buy V prints, he, he'll walk away. Oh God! Well, don't say the name of that. No, person. no, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no indication whatsoever. Yeah, I'm. I'm just saying like. There, there, there's the fans' perspective of Gary V. Right. There's the, and then there's the people who have seen other people like Gary V. come and go. And mm. I'm, I'm cur- I'm interested in, in to hear I know what they want to say. I know who said doesn't that. Matter, it doesn't, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> we'll tag him. The, the point, or the her. point he was making no, was, was something that, that struck I'm trying you. to express. It struck of you. Like, of like talking about community and well, talking about empathy is part of the business plan. And I'm not trying, I'm trying to just be honest with myself here and not yeah. like unconditionally defend Daddy V. I'm saying, why would $10 billion make a difference to Gary at this point? Because he could buy the Jets. That's why. Oh, the Jets. That's why. <laughs> the Jets. <laughs> his, his, his dream is to buy the New York I Jets. I know, I know. That's, but that's, that, that's what he was trying to say. He's like, if he could get what he, what he wants, he would give up all this bullshit. That's what he was trying to say. Yeah, but that could be his own cynicism talking too. That's the thing. There's such a temptation yeah. to in, to to like there's when you've seen people like this come and go and stuff like you've been disappointed before. So there's a temptation to project your own presumptions about people's ill will <laughs> in a space like this. And Gary was on, I think, Rogan and said that he was hesitant to get into this world when he was doing his business stuff and branding stuff and investing. He wanted to share these advice and stuff, but he had hesitancy. And Joe asked him why. He's like, look, I, I know what this world is. And I know that there's a lot of snake oil in it. And I know how I'll be perceived. You know, so in other words, he sort of has gotten ahead of those criticisms in a lot of ways. Instead of the stuff I've seen, he's like, he talks about self-awareness all the time. Be self-aware of what you want and what you this and that. And like, I don't know. Yeah. He has sort of, I think, said everything he has to say on that. Yeah. In a lot of ways, if yeah. you follow closely right. enough. It, and I'm not someone, I haven't read the books. I follow a lot of the advice, like, by the, like you know, it happens to be. I do follow. I find, if you find most of what he says, most of what he says is stop complaining, yeah. get to work, apply yourself, be positive, be grateful. Like, how could anyone disagree with these messages? Well, and that's I, the point. He's not really, he's not, the, the cynic would say, the point is, you, he says things you can't disagree with and sound nice. <laughs> Um. That's yeah, the they're point. just hard not to saying do. Anything at all? <laughs> I mean, like. He, well, no, because yeah. everyone's like, "How do you do this? How do you do it?" He's giving advice in terms of that, but a lot of it has to do with, a lot of it has to do with the people not wanting to put in the work that it takes to do it, and yeah. he's stressing that. Um. But <laughs> I don't know. We don't have to debate. You, you know, if, if I, Gary I, I, is I, genuine I for want, the next I, hour. I guess the to sum it all up, that whole thing is like either he's the best to ever do it. Or he's, or he's, or he's like anyone he's else. To do it. Or he's a saint. Or he's a saint. Oh, the best to ever like, yeah, do yeah. it. Either he's the best comment ever, or he's just, or he's like a great guy. We'll, we'll find out. Right, but yeah. yeah, having come away from this conference and seeing what you saw, where do you lean? I know where I uh, lean. I walk away. I have, I have a ton of admiration for all the lives he's changed, mm-hmm. and I've always been a fan of Gary. V. He's helped me. Like I, yeah. I'm into his message. Yeah. I watch his stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, what do I come away with? I come away with. Having have having had the experience backstage, yeah, there's there's a sense of I, I actually walk away with like a bigger sense of cynicism, really about about NFTs of like oh NFT culture about yeah. about NFT culture and 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 like and him a little bit, mm-hmm. um, which is which is probably not not what you want to hear, but I, I probably walk away with like a little bit more cynicism than I did before. Um, but but is that but, is that is that yeah interesting is it, that is that because you're like skeptical a little bit because is it because you're seeing a lot of just hype about NFTs in general and he's sim- he's a big part of that no it, it's it's about some of the personalities who are like who are now globbing onto it mm. and like from what I've seen it's the globbers on 
that that are the people who know how to siphon off the value and make money. And like, like I mean, like but something. Would you consider Gary one of those globbing on, or one of those? No, no. Yeah. But there were enough people. That, there were enough globbers there that I'm like, well, globbers are 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 here to stay. Like, um, right? But you're that's like a cultural qu- critique of NFT sp- of the space. No, no, no. It's like any new industry. Yeah. I'm just basing it on my own experience. Like, Twitter was fucking awesome in mm-hmm. 2011. Yeah. And then it became this thing, then became a public company, and like now Twitter is like awful in a lot of ways like like meaning these things evolve and become big business and they inevitably they inevitably lose i guess i guess it's two questions are you your gear is your cynicism geared towards nfts or towards v friends because no, this, no, no, this conference also was really about V friends not, not as well. Not V friends. About because um, that's what he was pushing the most. Like front and center right. was his NFT project and all the people that are going to be a part of it. So there are. So I, I think V friends is. I walked away thinking V friends is the future. It's the best project in NFTs. Mm-hmm. I wish I could buy a V friends. I, right. I completely believe in V friends. Right. Um, but if V friends is the future, um, the these things are going to be a mixture of like beautiful elevation and opportunity for artists and people and people who need who need help like like the yeah. people he's helping and also people behind the scenes who are going to figure out how to glob onto it and make oh. a lot of money off it i just realized you weren't at the final panel no i wasn't there i left oh I, okay so i'll just say this yeah, so he spoke about that what did he say Oh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I, I forgot. You weren't there the whole time because I'm a little conf- I was confused at one point because his like fu- he made like a final speech and a final message to everybody. I already know what I'm gonna say. Okay, no, he did <laughs> yeah. in his final like saying, "I will not like you know committing to everybody that no matter what happens, I'm in this for the long run." Like you said, like that's why I was like that for ten billion dollars he'd be out. I was like, well, I mean, he he basically got up there saying, "I'm in this for the long run. This is my passion for the next however many like." His next chapter will be fully immersed and dedicated to this. And and I don't know who else is going to be out there, and I can't mm-hmm. speak to that. And he did warn, because there was someone on the panel who spoke about how he got scammed out of, like, three of his bored apes or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> Seth Green just lost his bored That's ape. what I'm saying, yeah. that, that this space now is attracting everybody, and that he said, if, you ever, if there's ever a new rollout for something, it'll be my face, a video from me, certified from me. I won't ask for your wallet in this way. So remember, don't fall. Like, you know, he's basically warning everybody mm-hmm. of what is going to happen in the sense of who it's going to attract. The scammers are out there. They're getting very sophisticated, mm-hmm. very persuasive. Link your wallet here, and all of a sudden they're stealing NFTs that you own while giving you one and then taking that. There's all these, like, schemers and scammers and whatever. And he talked about that with, it was like the Snoop Dogg panel. With him, Snoop Dogg, Snoop Dogg's rep, and people who are oh, guiding cool. Snoop Dogg in the NFT space. So that was the big last panel, which I was the only one I really went to. Mm-hmm. And that was the one that sort of made NFTs make more sense to me, conceptual. I'm like, I get uh, This is interesting. And he said, if you guys don't think we're early, we're early. You're at the first one. Look around. like have the, this, the, Look at the seats, everything. We're all here in this space. This is early. So he painted a sort of self-awareness um, you know, a plea to everybody. Yeah. Like He made everybody more self-aware. Like, we're not on this like crazy ride. This is early. There's going to be a lot of mayhem. I'm in this for the long run. Mm-hmm. And my can only what I my only response to what you're saying is that in terms of in terms of uh, credibility, like he's been in the in the long run in all of his endeavors, the yeah. years and years of output of content and books and speaking and these whatever he does, like they have all materialized into real things. It's not like he's cut and run entrepreneur and then the and then the things behind him just crumble. Mm-hmm. A lot of the things that Gary Vee has built, just observationally from what I've watched, I'm going to get so much, I may get shit from this for being just a shill, and you might get so much hate. But the point oh, is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait for that. <laughs> I, I, I just, I'm trying to be honest with myself because obviously I'm so grateful yeah. to him. I, after this weekend, it's just so incredible the opportunity he gave me. Yeah. And, and I got to sort of see it sort of firsthand, but you're seeing it on this huge scale. So I'm trying to just like also try to process all of it. But if you look at his track record behind him and all these people around him who are just smiling and gleeing, and you, some people will, like the cynic would say, that's cultish. It's like more, or maybe it's just lives are better. Mm-hmm. Sort of like when you watch Jordan Peterson. I went to a Jordan Peterson event and I saw people there from all, every, every demographic just enriched yeah, I, in every way. And like all the things he's built are there as big material things that, have, that still exist and are all doing better as he, as his name gets bigger and better and, and, uh, and, and everything grows. It's like oh, this rising tide is lifting all boats, and I'm mm-hmm. just kind of seeing it. Um, so it's harder. The evidence of cynicism versus like optimism 
it leans towards optimism that this is legit and this is real mm. in some capacity. Not that the whole NFT space is real. Not that everybody getting involved is, is a real yeah. person to trust. And he, he acknowledged that. So for me, I just came away like, wow. I guess it's he, amazing. I guess at the beginning of things, they can be both. They yeah. can be real and change lives and help people. Yeah, and also be like maybe a little bit cynical. But yeah. I guess as time goes on, it's got to choose one or the other, sort of like. But it's sort of like the internet. It it is like the internet. It like, is the internet. Facebook was amazing at the beginning. It's it, not just Facebook. Like in the internet, you're like, oh, well, I'm skeptical of the internet. You know, you're gonna see a lot of scammers on the internet. You're gonna no, see. No, I'm of not even talking about scammers. Like, I mean, like Facebook was like objectively changing the world for the better right. for the first few years it was right. you're meeting people c connections and all that and like it, it was both it was right. big business right. and changing lives for the better and then eventually it gets mixed up and right. becomes something else i feel like the same is going to happen here like i do think he's changing lives like i i buy into gary v in that mm. way and like i think he can be authentically changing lives and helping people yeah and and also something else maybe like the 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 machine behind him can be something else and like, i can't tell it's hard to say if, are yeah. you lumping him in with a space you don't trust, like the NFT space in general, or him in particular? No, no, no. He, no, he, I, I just think he's susceptible to what's happening in the greater NFT space. Mm. Even more so, though, because he has the best project. Right. So there's more and more people trying to take advantage of this project. Uh, yeah, I guess, but I'm just curious if you're saying that he's susceptible or that there's other people to watch out for. What do you mean? You're like, he's susceptible to what? He, he, he's susceptible to to um corporate interests and oh. corporate personalities um exploiting this industry mm. specifically probably in some ways v friends itself oh interesting like see i wonder when you get to a point where money is not the goal as opposed to just like other things like we speak about it as if like money is that persuasive when you're at a level where uh, You're comfortable enough that it's not an issue anymore. Yeah, so forget about money. I mean, let let's just say there's like, I don't know. I'm gonna give it, like, let's say there's a, a, let's say Facebook. I don't know. Let's say there's an executive at Facebook, and they're like, Facebook sucks. No one's using it. It's not popular anymore. How do we get Gary to somehow promote Facebook through V Friends? And like, how, would, how would they do that? Like, what vested interest would Gary have resting his entire reputation and message and integrity on that? Um, why would he do that? Yeah. I, I don't know. Well, I'm saying I don't know, I don't you know couldn't financially happen. incentivize him to do that. Well, I mean, you could. How? You could I mean, you could offer him a, board, uh, a seat on the board to like to like to is, make is, to is, make is lack of exclusive partner but his lack of way? influence and status his issue that he's lacking i just don't think whatever so. he lacks i don't know what he lacks i don't know maybe, maybe the jets maybe, yeah maybe <laughs> there's like an approval board for the nfl and they're like you know you're next up yeah. for, for i this know franchise. i just don't think i don't, it, know. I don't think I don't it, you know. know what i'm saying you get yeah. what i'm saying that yeah. it, it, it's, it's not like he, it's he's good, lacking for it's anything it's a good fail safe but but every but no there's no one everybody wants something everybody wants something i don't know I'm not sure. Yeah. No, all but all also, I can go with is what I see, he, he not needs, what I suspect. Yeah. I'm going with what I see, yeah. and what I saw on the most part was something I can understand why the, a cynical person would be like, what on earth? But what I saw was, was just not that. I yeah. guess you can't find it, and it frustrates. And he acknowledges that it frustrates people, and he's got these and got defectors and haters. And That's people. why he's the best. <laughs> what? Because he acknowledges the one thing you're thinking about. Yeah, yeah. And he, <laughs> but but he good. gets in front of it, and yeah. I was just... It was freaking cool. Yeah, it was just yeah. cool. I do. I mean, I I feel like a little bit silly saying this because like I got the experience because of him, and mm -hmm. like as as like lame it is, I am pretty grateful for yeah. for him bringing me out there and yeah. and allowing me to have that experience. So, like, I don't want to shit on him too much. I'm just like, I can't tell if you're shitting on him or just being honest with your own sins. I'm not shitting on him. I'm, yeah, I'm I wouldn't being, say you are. I'm just that those are my thoughts coming right. out of the uh, coming out of the convention. And I think you also. I don't think I. I remember, there were conversations we had with people who were more cynical than they would than they were letting on overall for sure good, and good that's point. might be what be tainting your perception good here good point and you're projecting that on to say gary who didn't say any of those things good point. and there were people around who were and you're like you know who are letting it on and we were just like oh oh interesting okay right. so maybe there's some there's people fronting here didn't mm. seem to me i didn't get that impression from gary mm. In any way, and, and there were plenty of people who were also just as excited yeah, as Gary would be. But there's also a lot of people who are like there for the hoopla and kind of you're keeping your eyes open. That, that's what I picked up on. The, I think the, that the, energy, and I I yeah, saw the, that too. The ambassadors yes. were were a little bit like 
shifting their they, they were looking around a little bit for mm-hmm. like is anyone else see what i'm seeing here mm-hmm. like i was like brought here to like promote this thing and like i feel a little bit weird <laughs> i think i think i picked i think you're right you picked up picked on some up of that. that yeah that's fair enough hey yeah i'm firing him gary don't worry <laughs> um listen i'm filled with gratitude obviously yeah so uh, you know the gratitude? fact that <laughs> gratitude? wow that michael it? that's horrible <laughs> I'm filled with gratitude. What a weekend. And it's and the fact that the community was so um, you know, positive and optimistic and excited. Yeah. There was a lot of that, even from attendees and stuff. And for people who have real added value to their lives. Not like I read this self help book and I feel better. It's like, no, I'm actually doing things. And yeah. there were people like that. And even what we did was demonstrative of that, like doing things. What I do is sort of even in imitating Gary, it's like it's still doing what Gary like has advised, like putting out content consistently and you know, staying sure. patient and those things. So, yeah, it's hard to find fault in that. Like you said, it's just hard to find yeah. anything wrong with those messages on at scale. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a believer. You're a believer. <laughs> Does say that? No. A believer. I'm a believer. Um, but yeah. that is VCon, and that, that is the wrap VCon, up. Do you, you think you'll ever experience anything like that again? Not after this podcast, Michael. <laughs> Fuck you. He doesn't listen. <laughs> Uh, well, no. I mean, I think you're 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 right. You're fair to make your points. as two people. Oh, we don't here. have to like clip that out and put that out. Like <laughs> we don't have to. That's for the the listeners. I know? understand. Yeah. Um, but I am just feel immensely grateful that like it all happened and it was amazing. Yeah, getting to meet a lot of these people and a lot of them were very impressive and interesting and fascinating. And uh, I said it on my video, but I, Gary's a mensch, a real mensch. He is a mensch. I think objectively speaking, a mensch. Gary V's a mensch. Gary's a mensch. You know what? You, he's close with his father. Yeah. Mother. Like, you see how he treats his parents? Yeah. That's pretty much all you need to see. That was, that was, yeah. that, that was very touching to yeah. me, too. Yeah. No, a, like, as a grandchild no, of Holocaust survivors and immigrants and seeing that whole thread that that stays yeah. is, like, uh, quite touching. Yeah. No, real, real bad guys don't have those sorts of relationships. Like, I don't... That's, that's <laughs> not what I'm saying at all. And, like, he should be... If anything, he's, like, a great son. <laughs> 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 it to was a great son. <laughs> to Vicon. To Vicon. 2023. We'll see if they'll have me back. Yeah, Vicon too. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the future holds, but again, to finalize all on this whole episode, it's like top of the hill, foot of the mountain. You could say that this sort of like peaked on Gar on like all led to this moment, and now yeah. it all begins from this yeah. moment too. Oddly oddly enough, although I I wasn't like I'm not celebrating anything. It it all. I also feel like um, there's like a new stage that I'm excited to like start. Right. God willing, Leon Hart, it'll all be good. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> That's episode thirty. <laughs> thirty. Uh, the hater and the lover. The new name <laughs> of the podcast. That is buckle up. Episode thirty. The VCon debrief wrap up. Yeah. What a weekend. Yeah, man. Buckle up live from Minneapolis. Stay tuned for content featuring your boy and your boy. We out there. We out here. We out here. We out here. We out here. We out here.